Um, oh, you had started? No. I just started. Just All right. Started. So um, I want to talk first about um, QED. Um, we saw, I don't know, it might have been last time, we, um, I, I went through Weinberg's art, very physical argument in the operator um, language. Um, uh, his derivation of the Feynman propagator for photons in the Coulomb gauge. And what we got was something that was rather ugly, but then he rewrote it in a form that was even uglier but then pointed out that most of those terms uh, could be ignored and that we were simply left with the very nice uh, propagator. And um, so let me just remind you of what we got there. And then what I want to do is um, show how this works in the path integral formulation. And um, what you'll see is that it's, um, it's just very much nicer. Um, so just to recapitulate, and then I'm going to, then after I do the path integral, if we finish the path integral uh, business, I'm then going to go to uh, group theory, back to group theory and um, talk about the algebras. And you might say, why am I doing group theory? Well, the action of a Fermi field is one that's invariant on the Lorentz transformations. And so you want to know how Lorentz, how fields are transformed. The Lorentz transformations, the Lorentz group is a continuous group, and so I'm going to approach that that way. That's, that's the the rationale. Also, a good deal of um, physics, modern, certainly the standard model is cast in terms of the algorithms. All right, well, what we, um, what we showed with the operator language is that the mean value of the vacuum of the time order product of A, A of X a B of Y is minus I delta A B of X minus Y. I'm talking in the Coulomb gauge here. And this was an integral, well, let me say it is slightly. Losing chalk so quickly. Um, this is minus i an integral d v i k x minus y, and then um, delta. Let us say delta a b minus k a k b over k vector squared. All this. Um, divided by k squared minus i epsilon and then d fourth k over 2 pi to the fourth. Okay, so that's what we got in the Coulomb gauge with the understanding that in fact these things are zero in, um, in the Coulomb gauge because a0 is a dependent variable. Okay. But then we saw that we could, in fact, rewrite this, and I'm certainly not going to go through that again because it was um, something of a mess. And um, What we found was that, in effect, this is minus i in integral a to a b over k squared minus i epsilon e to the i k x minus y e fourth k over 2 pi to the fourth. 
And now, this thing is now uh, defined for um, A and B going to 0 to 3. So, in, in other words, this part is um, now for 0 to 3. This was a physical argument that we went through last time. I now want to go through it from the point of view of path intervals. And so we're going to pick up at the part of the path, there's a chapter in the online notes on path intervals that um, ends just before fermionics path intervals. Yeah, was there a question? So what is, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Say it again. again. What is A to AB again? Oh, A to AB is, it's just rather interesting. Oh, okay. it's, it's just simply minus 1, 1, 1, 1. It's the metric of special relativity. And because, as you know, for practical purposes, at least within experimental era, it's also the actual gene you knew of um, physical space-time, because space is, as far as we can tell, flat on large scales. And let's see, the operator gets one. Whoa. And we want to end on time because we're late tonight. OK, well, uh, what we saw was that there was, we, we arrived at a gauge fixed action in the path integral formulation. It was minus a quarter FAB, FAB minus. Well, I had said it, this is S alpha equal to 1. So this is minus, or let, let us leave it with alpha. Then it's minus alpha over 2 dA AA squared plus, let us say, AB, JB plus the matter over on action density d fourth x. So this is, this is the inter, the expression we got, we were doing perturbation theory, or we, were, we weren't actually doing it, but we were getting ready to do perturbation theory. And um, here, of course, FAB, AB runs from 0 to 3, is DAB partial XA minus DAA partial XB. And as I've said many times, this is written half the time this way and half the time with an overall minus sign. This thing is anti-symmetric, of course. All right, now. Any questions? All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set, first of all, alpha equal to 1. Alpha equal to 1 is is called the Feynman gauge. And um, it's, it's more jargon than accurate language. It just means we set this alpha equal to 1. And remember, we, put, we brought in this thing because we wanted to break gauge invariance. Anyway. Is that the transverse gauge? Does that signify this is the transverse gauge? Um, well, we started in Coulomb gauge. We did the path integral. And then we made various transformations. Uh, we, introduced, we reintroduced A0 as a um, dummy variable. And um, you know, we then integrated over all gauges, and then we had everything as a ratio of path integrals over all gauges. And then we said, well, um, we can break the gauge without getting things wrong. And um, the reason we want to break the gauge is that when you do perturbation theory, you don't want an extra integral you don't want an extra overall infinity in everything, which is what you get if you had to integrate over gauge copies.
it turns out that the other path, namely integrating over everything, but keeping the ratio, that's what you do in lattice gauge theory. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on the quadratic part of this set out to the one, and we're just going to go through some manipulations which should be good exercise for those of you who are rusty with Lorentz notation and so forth. So we have a quarter FAB, FAB plus a half DBAB squared. So is this S1? Huh? Is this S1 then? It looks like a 2. S2 just means that it's quadratic in A. I thought the uh, subscripts represent alpha. So well, you're right. If I were consistent, that would be the case. Um, yeah, you're right. This is, all right, you, you, you exposed, um, all right, here, F, we'll call it Q. But we've set alpha equal to 1. Okay, and so this is minus an integral of quarter, and so we have we have this times the same thing essentially. So we introduce a more explicit notation. We have minus a quarter DAAB minus DBAA. DAAB minus DBAA. Now I feel much better. Plus I have DBAB squared. And now we see, well, we can multiply this out. And so what we get is DA, AB, DA, AB, plus DB, AA. Because we're summing over B and A from 0 to 3 because they're repeated indices. some duplication here. If we just, A and B are dummy indices, so they don't care what we call them, and we can interchange B and A here, then this just adds a factor of 2. So what we get is minus, and I'm going to bring out the 1 half then from here. So we get minus a half DAAB DA. A, B. And then we have these two terms. And these two terms also, we can interchange A and B and get a factor of 2. And so this is minus D, A, A, B, D, B, A, A. And then we have here D, B, A, B squared, D, 4, X. Okay, now we're going to integrate by parts. 
And uh, of course, throw away the surface terms, and we get an overall minus sign. So now we have a plus a half. And this is AB. And now this is just DA, DA, A, upper B. And then we have minus AB. And now we have DA, DB. A, A. And then we have plus A, A, D, A, D, B, A, B. And once again, D of X is sort of squished. Okay, well now if we look at this, we can see that in fact, um, all right, let me look at this carefully. This was obvious to me last night. It's no longer quite so obvious. Right. These two things cancel. And um, you can see that. All right, let me do it the following way. First of all, in, in this one, I'm going to interchange A and B. So I have minus AA, DB, DA, AB first. And then secondly, I'm going to raise this A and lower that A. And now you see that this and that are exactly the same. So they cancel, leaving us only with this. And so now our expression for SQ is simply a half integral AB DA DA AB. Whoops, it's upper B. B fourth X. Or, as we could write, box AB where box is um, the plus and the minus dt squared. All right, was that allergies or viruses? Um, That's allergies. Allergies? Allergies. I got a quick question that may yeah. be a stupid one. But over here we are saying AB can be 1 through 3, correct? Just get over your analysis. Thank you. Or um, what did you say? So over here we are saying A, can, A and B can be 1 through 3. 0 to 3. Oh, it is 0 to 3. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's such a good question. Um, uh, yeah. L -l Let's review this. Over here... A and B, if they were from 0 to 3, well, A of 0 is 0 when we started out. And we got this expression over here. But then, through some physical arguments and something that was kind of hand-waving, uh, we arrived at this. But now we're interpreting this as 0 to 3, both here and there. And now we go to the path integral where again we have A and B going from 0 to 3, A0 was introduced as a dummy variable. So A and B go from 0 to 3, and that's why I've been careful to raise them lower. Yeah. If they were just going from 1 to 3, it wouldn't make any difference whether they were raised or lower. At least in this metric, although in Z's metric, we would have a difference. Okay. All right, now we can um, bring back uh, part of the metric, in other words, uh, the metric that, let us bring in the metric of an external current, so that we would say that S of A is one half an integral, actually there's a typo in this, so let me fix it, one half, uh, let us say, AB, all right, I'll write it out explicitly,
So I'm introducing a classical external current. External current means it's, it's just um, a function that we put in. It's not quantized. So I'm going to be doing then for the electromagnetic field what we did last, well, not last time, but a few times ago for the, uh, for the um, uh, scalar field. And now we're going to write AB of x as an integral e to the i of px, a tilde b of p, d fourth p over 2 pi to the fourth. These notes are, will all be on, they are already latex. I'll just put them on the web page this evening. Sorry, is there supposed to be a negative in there? Is there something negative? I mean, when we get there. Okay, sorry. No, no it's all right. I, I forgot the integration my parts. That's all. It's it's not not well, well you still get it. So in other words, what he's pointing out is that this minus sign went away with integration by parts. This field is real, so we can complex conjugate it and get the same answer. So this is e to the minus i px a tilde complex conjugate b of p d four of p over two pi over four. Of course, A is real, but it's Fourier transforms complex. Similarly, J, JB of X is an integral E to the I P X J tilde B of P D4 P 2 pi to the 4. And once again, this is the same thing as E to the minus I P X J tilde star B P D4 P Actually, I'm moving much faster than I thought. Okay, so are there any questions where we've got plenty of time for questions? So now what we're going to do is we're going to write the uh, action, which is, I wrote as S sub A. I'm going to write it in terms of um, the Fourier transform variables. And uh, I, sh I wrote it as S sub A. Makes more sense really to write it like this. S of A and J. It's a functional of A and J. Anyway, it's a half integral. Now for the first A, I'm going to write that in terms of the A star. So e to the minus i p x a tilde star b of p p over 2 pi to the 4. So I'm going to do this very explicitly. dA, dA. And you see there are so many manipulations. This is why I didn't want to wing it last time. So this is the other A. Now we've got the J terms. And remember that 
it'll be a little more straightforward if we write the J terms as one half uh, AJ written in terms of the Fourier transforms in one order, star, unstarred, and in the other order. So I'm writing it this way. E to the minus I P X A tilde B star of P P fourth P over two pi to the fourth integral E to the minus I P prime X J tilde B of P prime P fourth P prime over two pi to the fourth Somehow this d fourth x always gets lost. In fact, there was a d fourth x here that I got. And then there's one more term. Okay, I think that's um, that's all. To account for the d four x term, then we need a. What's that? <coughs> Wait. Yeah, to account for the d four x term, don't we need an additional integral? Everyone. To again? account for the d four x term, don't we need an additional integral? Everyone. Oh well, you know when I write one integral sign, I mean as many integral signs as you need. So, yes, um, in fact, what, what, the way I should have written this was just one integral sign out in front, and then, and then we integrate over all these variables. So, just as this single integral sign means d fourth p, so that's four integration. So really, we would have had four integral signs. What we really have is here, this is really 12 integral signs. And of course, the first time you see that, 12 integrals, oh my god. But of course, Dirac is helping us. Um, so pretty soon, we're going to get this delta function. And then it, that, it's going to cost us four integrations to get the delta function. And the delta function will wipe out four integrations. And then we'll be happy as clams. Why clams are happy, I've never known. Oh, good question. Huh? Where's this uh, third term on the bottom there from? OK. It's, it's there's, there's no. All right, you, you're, you're pointing out that this should be a one hand. Oh, okay. Here. So you just divided it up, so it's right. I divided it up because we're going to we're going to shift a. We're going to set, let a be a plus something times j. Okay. And when we do that, we're going to get an a a, a j term and a j star term. And they're going to be mixed up, and so to have them cancel nicely, it's better to write it this way. All right, well, we might as well notice that what is this going to do? This is going to bring down an IP prime. And let me do this explicitly for you, even though I imagine many of you can, can see exactly how it works. But let us, let, let me do it really carefully. P prime x, what is it? Well, P prime x is P prime a x a and it's also p prime upper a x lower a. Okay, you can always... 
Okay. So now, what is this explicitly? Well, this is D lower A means D X upper A, and this one is D X lower A. That's what D upper A is. And so for the D X lower A, I'm going to use this expression. So D by DX lower A brings down I P prime upper A E to the I. And now it's PX, but I'm going to write it the other way. P prime lower A X upper A because we have a derivative with respect to X upper A. And so this brings down, we have I P prime upper A this brings down I P prime lower A. So this is minus P prime A P prime A, which is minus P squared. I just thought I'd do that for you once explicitly. And if you copy that down, I didn't have the energy to LaTeX all that detail. But if you, if you copy this down, I mean, in other words, if if you're a veteran of this notation, then of course it's obvious. But if you aren't a veteran of this notation, then it's good to work through this in detail to see exactly what it is. Of course I screwed up also because I left out the exponential. So this, we still have this exponential here, e to the i p prime x, e to the i p prime x, e to the i all right, so that means that in this huge expression here, what we're going to have is that this gets replaced by minus p prime squared. And I think instead of rewriting the whole thing, I'm just going to stick in minus p prime squared, okay? All right. Now Dirac comes to the rescue. We have this d4 of x over 2 pi to the fourth, e to the i x p prime minus p. Well, that's just delta delta four of p prime minus p is the integral e to the i p prime e to the i x p prime minus p d4 of x over p prime to 4. So this thing, this action, x of a and j, my, I notice my left arm is down, so maybe I should raise it. What we get then is a half <coughs> integral. Was there a question? A tilde star B of P, D fourth P over 2 prime to the fourth, minus P prime squared, A tilde B of P prime, D fourth P prime, delta of P prime minus T, and of course this is four dimensional delta function plus a half integral a tilde b star of p, d fourth p over 2 pi to the fourth, j tilde b of p prime, d fourth p prime, delta fourth of p prime minus p. And then exactly the same thing, but with this star moved over here. So it's plus a half integral a tilde b of p d4 of p over 2 pi to the fourth j tilde b star of p prime d4 p prime 
Delta four of P prime minus P. Okay. Well, of course, this delta function <laughs> is a miracle drug, and it does away with most of those integrals. S of A and J is equal to simply a half. In fact, maybe I'm going to write this somewhat more compactly. A tilde star B of P minus P squared A B tilde and I'll write a big bracket here. Plus A tilde B star of P, J tilde B of P, plus A tilde B of P, J tilde star B of P. P4, P over 2 pi, okay. So that's better than what I have here in my notes. All right. Okay. Um, So write this and so I'm, I'm gonna well maybe we have plenty of time so let me rewrite this slightly. So what we're going to do now, of course, is, is a substitution. And I'm going to use this space to do it. I'm going to say a tilde b is going to be a hat b plus a to b c j tilde c over p squared. And if you want, I'll put the p back. So that's our transformation. And notice that it is just a linear shift. And when we do this linear shift, so it's the uh, the hands about the AD on the right hand side of the equation. What is that looking like? Is that supposed to be tilde? It's just because um, I'm changing variables from a tilde to a hat. So it's That's just a sip. The hat, the hat doesn't have any other significance. It's, I see. I mean, I could have put an acute accent, a grav accent. I already used the circumflex.
So now we're going to write this. What, what is it? It's a half integral. And now I'm going to write curly brackets. A tilde A star. But I'm going to suppress the of P because that would just make it just bewilderingly, a bewildering amount of chalk. So that's what we get when we just replace a tilde by a hat plus a to j tilde over p squared. Shouldn't the, sorry. Yeah. Shouldn't the a to uh, final part of the equation all stand up for these things on the lower? Hold on. Give me that again then. The a to in the third part of the equation, shouldn't that all stand up for these This one? Yeah. Shouldn't that all stand up for these Bravo! Yeah, another one is. Thanks. In fact, if you want to, you know, corrections are worth two, twice of what a question's worth. If you want, I'll give you another one. Yeah. Should that JC, the farthest right JC star, just be a JC then? Yeah. No, this is JC. JC star. It should just be JC, not JC star. Yeah. Aha! Right. You want two? No, it's okay. This one? Yeah, so. Thanks. Okay, well now what we see is this this does what we want because let me do, let me multiply this out explicitly. I think this will be worthwhile. Um, I just was too tired to, to latex the whole goddamn thing. So, one half integral, big curly bracket. So first of all, obviously you get a hat, a star, um, minus a to a b, P squared A hat B. So that's the that's the term that is really important. Then we've got these terms that are linearly in A. Linear in A. So we have A hat A star times minus A to A B P squared times a to BC over P squared JC tilde. So that's that term. But then we also have this term, which is A to AD over P squared JD 
Tumba star minus eta AB P squared times A hat B. And now I'm going to write the linear terms from here. We have plus A hat B star J tilde B J tilde B and then we have A hat B J tilde star B and now we have the ones that don't involve A at all and these are, first of all, A to AD over P squared, J tilde the star D, minus A to AB P squared, A to BC over P squared, J tilde the C, and then we have this term, A to BC over P squared, J tilde star C, J tilde B. And then finally, and this is the last term actually, A to BC over P squared, J tilde C, J tilde star B. Okay. Now, I wish I had more blackboard space because we want to see explicitly that these terms cancel. Um, so, these two terms cancel. Now, why is that? Well, first of all, the p squareds cancel. And then we have minus eta AD minus eta, or let us just write down, what is eta AD, eta AB? Well, this is just delta DB. Equivalently, it's these two matrices, minus 1, 1, 1, 1, times minus 1, 1, 1, 1. And it's the same matrix. Um, all right, if this one is, you see, if you raise this thing twice, the sign doesn't change. So A to upper and A to lower are the same. You multiply the two together, you just get one. And the reason why, if you raise this index, it doesn't matter unless it's the zero. You raise this index, it doesn't matter if it, unless it's the zero. But if it's the zero, it gets hit with two minus signs, which don't make any difference. OK, so in effect, this whole thing here, the P's cancel, this is delta DB, so this D is really a B, so this is J star, J tilde star B, A hat B with a minus sign, and that's exactly what cancels this. And then over here the same thing happens, namely this thing, this gives you delta AC, and that makes this thing a C. And so that cancels this. It's just CC, and here it's BB, but CC and BB are the same. Because they're dummy indices. So all the linear terms are gone. What about these things? Well, 
it turns out that this one is equal to one of these and cancels. So to see that, you see A to AD, A to AB is delta DB. The P's cancel. Um, not all of them. You've got one P squared in the denominator, an overall minus sign, and then it's just D is B. And, um, all right, so maybe I should write what this thing is then. This thing is delta db. So that gets rid of these two guys. Then we have j tilde, what is that? star d. p squared cancel. We get minus the eta. That eta is gone. We have a minus sign. But we have an a to b c left over. Because I just did these two. And those p squared cancels, but there's one p squared left. And then there's a j tilde c. So that's what this thing is. But this turns that d into a b. And so we have j star j, 1 over p squared minus the a to bc. But that's exactly what this is. So that cancels. And then we have 1 left over. All right. get in the substitution by the way Z takes a somewhat different point of view he uses matrix inverse matrix multiplication but I think what I'm doing is simple so we get S of A and J is equal to a half an integral minus p squared a tilde star a of p a tilde well these are hats in fact they're hats in my notes I just Well, I wrote it. I wrote it this way, but I think it would be better to write it this way. Okay, now, 
What's psi? Psi are the matter fields, and we haven't talked about the matter fields yet. We're going to get to them in uh, maybe next week. What's epsilon? Epsilon is just the I epsilon terms. And you remember how we argued to those I epsilon terms? We said that there was an inner product of a final Q state or a final phi state. We were talking about scalar fields. So we had the inner product of phi with, with zero, with ground state, and ground state with phi. And that gave, uh, that was effectively a, a, a depressed Gaussian, e to the minus phi squared. And we reinterpreted that e to the minus phi squared as an i times an i epsilon. And so the way in which we incorporate that is we change this p squared to, I'm putting in the epsilon now, it's p squared minus i epsilon. And here, therefore, this is also going to be p squared minus i epsilon. So those are the i epsilon terms. We did them once for scalar fields. I don't think we need to do them again. And now, since we haven't yet introduced these matter fields, I'm going to go back to what we did with path integrals for scalar fields, namely, to introduce z0 of j, and of course this, this is also the function that z concentrates on. Whether he picks it because it's a z, I don't know, but in any event, this thing by definition is zero time ordered product. Here it's e to the i j d of x a d of x e fourth x, all of that's time ordered. And then vacuum. And now using this formula, we see that, well, this thing is an integral, e to the i integral j b a b d fourth x e to the i s. And here we just have s of a and epsilon because we, we, we don't have any psi fields, dA, and we divide by e to the i s of a and epsilon dA. All right, so we're going to compute this. But we know what the sum of these two terms is. This plus that, these are two exponentials. The product of the exponentials is the exponential of their sum. And so, that is just the thing that we've been looking at all along, S of A and J. And so this thing is then integral e to the i S of A, J, and epsilon, which we just computed, dA, divided by e to the i S of A and epsilon, dA. And, and, and what we showed up here is, and I, I stupidly didn't write it down, it says that S of A and J and epsilon is equal to S of A and 0 and epsilon plus that last term, which is a half integral J tilde star A j tilde b, a to a b over p squared minus i epsilon p four p over 2 pi to the 4. In other words, s of a j epsilon is s of a 0 epsilon plus this term. And so when we insert that into here, what we get is e to the i, well, let me write it this way, s a 0 epsilon, and I'm going to pull out this term, e to the i s a epsilon, and 
this thing is in a sense epsilon a hat, but what what if we're just talking about this a hat s of a hat is the same thing as s of a. Well, all right. Let me just follow my notes here. Now we have e to the i over 2 integral j tilde star a of p, or let me write it this way, upper a, a to a b, j b of p, p squared minus i epsilon, d4 p. Okay, so that's what we've got. But of course, because the transformation between A and A hat is linear, in fact, A is A hat plus a constant, or con not a constant, but a constant as far as A is concerned. A is A, or A tilde is A hat plus A to times J over P squared. These differentials are the same. These integrals are exactly the same. This cancels. And so, Effectively, you can erase this term, replace it by one. All we have left is that. So z0 of j is equal to just the exponential. ago when we did this for scale of fields. So if you scale of fields, all the manipulations are so much simpler. In fact, the fact that these this this the fact that these manipulations are so much simpler and the fact that the first sign of the scale of field was just the past couple of years at uh, the LHC. I think it must indicate that we're looking at things backwards. In other words, if we were, if, if we were doing physics right, it seems to me that the fields that are important, the spin one half fields and the spin one fields and the spin two fields, these fields would be really simple in our physics and the scalar field would be somehow funny and exceptional. The scalar field is somewhat exceptional because the scalar field produces divergences that are worse than those of the spin one half and the spin one field, although the spin two field also has its problems. But, sorry, that's a tangent. So what we have is Z0 of J, which is, let me get another piece of chalk, this chalk is just breaking in the long range here. What does this say about manufacturing in North America? I don't know. This is a homework problem. It's not a very deep homework problem, but this exponential over here, well, I'll write it twice. 
It's first e to the i over 2 j star of p, let us say upper a, a to a b, j tilde b of p over, let us say, p squared minus i epsilon, p fourth p over 2 pi to the fourth. That's all in the exponential, okay? Is that clear? It's So the homework problem is to show that this is exactly the same thing as e to the i over 2 integral j a of x big delta a p of x minus x prime j b of x prime d fourth x d fourth x prime, where delta a b of x minus x prime is e to the i p x minus x prime, a to a b of p squared minus i epsilon e for p over 2 pi to the fourth. So this is the Feynman propagator for photons. So that, that would be a homework problem. Let's see, have I assigned any homework due Wednesday? No. no. All right. Is it too much to say it's due Wednesday? Yes. If that's the whole assignment? All right. Let us say this is the homework assignment for Wednesday, but um, if it's too much, um, come see me tomorrow or send me an email complaining and I'll postpone it. Are you going to type it up and uh, put it on the website? <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, it's, it, okay. there it is, okay? Right. <laughs> what page is that? Well, it's the, it's the thing, it's the coherent state path integral blog. <laughs> All right, now, in the six, six, seven minutes remaining, let's functionally differentiate this expression. First of all, one over i, variational derivative of z zero of j, with respect to j a of x. We're going to differentiate this one, and we get zero time ordered product. A A of X e to the I integral, and let me just write it J well J B of X prime, A B of X prime, D4 of X prime, zero. And these zeros are the ground state of the free field theory, something we know about, zero photons. But if we differentiate this term, what we get is integral delta AB of x minus x prime, AB of x prime, d fourth x prime times z zero of j. And so now, if we differentiate a second time, we'll pull down another A, and then if we set j equal to zero, this term will go away. And so what we have then is that the time ordered product in the vacuum of a a of x, a b of x prime is 1 over i squared, the second variational derivative of z0 of j, with respect to j a of x, j b of x prime, and that this is minus i delta a b of x minus x prime, which is minus i integral e to the i p x minus x prime a to a b 
Well, I don't know if I have the right orders then, but p squared minus i epsilon p fourth t over 2 pi to the fourth. And this is exactly the expression that I wrote down at the beginning of class that we got from Weinberg's uh, physical argument. He called it hand waving. Um, in the Weinberg universe, hand waving is physical, and everything else is completely rigorous. Does this evaluate in JA and JB equals zero? Yes. yes. You're entitled to two. You yeah, want two? One is enough. One is enough? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So that's. So now we've come full circle. The lesson of this is that these newer path integral methods allow one to more or less rigorously derive things that require an awful lot of hand waving. In fact, so much hand waving that the, the lecturer might look like a, an old propeller-driven aircraft. Um, or a helicopter. I suppose I should s tell a story. Um, McGovern died this weekend, and um, Sen Senator George McGovern of, I think, South Dakota, he was a real political hero. Uh, he opposed the Vietnam War before it started. He opposed the Iraq War before it started. These, of course, were catastrophes for the American economy, for Vietnam and Iraq, and um, uh, so I mean, it's just completely stupid. Unfortunately, he wasn't listened to. Um, in the case of the Iraq War, there were about 30 senators who opposed it. Um, most of them were Democrats, but I think there were a couple of good Republicans. It's, um, so that's three, three trillion dollars plus, um, what, 3,000 American dead and God knows how many were thousands, I guess, who are um, just um, in terrible physical Anyway, I didn't mean to go into a political thing, but it's just this film guy over the weekend. I gave him 90. By the way, all right, here's a story that's more amusing. When Galbraith died, John Kenneth Galbraith, who was a professor of economics at Harvard, and what he did was he wrote popular books on economics. And um, these turned into bestsellers in the category of um, non-fiction and intelligent books for intelligent readers, which is a much smaller sales volume than Stephen King type bestseller. Anyway, turns out his, his co he, he said that his colleagues were all very jealous and were all very critical that he was writing books for the popular audience where, and selling millions whereas um, they were writing books that were published by Harvard University Press and sold hundreds. Um, my book would be in the tens. But anyway, um, um, anyway, uh, when he, he died at the age of 95, he had served actually in the Roosevelt administration as, uh, as an economist of some sort. And while he was, uh, as he was dying, um, he uh, said, <coughs> I've had enough. And he was 95. All right, I guess, I guess we're at the end of the hour. Um, so I'm going to go back to group theory next time and then start into uh, direct fields, fire on the fields, direct fields. So we're 